This is uh, a budget system that is unlike any other budget system. If you're willing to take some risks, there may be some really killer deals out there. Alright, so full disclosure, I got this motherboard off of AliExpress because I was looking for uh, something else. And this was around $200, give or take. It's 12th generation, it's Alder Lake, but it's a CPU, it's a laptop CPU soldered to a motherboard. And in my mind, it was, can we turn this into a reasonable gaming machine? And the answer is yes, but there's a lot of gotchas. All right, so the markings on this motherboard are ADL HP MATX MB V2.0. It's basically an unlocked BIOS motherboard. It's got two DDR4 DIMM slots, so you're gonna be able to use lesser expensive DDR4. And I tried it with a bunch of DDR4 that I had here, and it did not like 32 gigabyte DDR4 DIMMs, only 16 gigabyte and smaller. So four, eight, 16. Two 16s, 32 gigabytes of memory total. That's about what you can expect on this platform. You got one X16 physical slot, one X1 slot, two PCIe Gen 4 M.2, and an E-key Wi-Fi slot. At the rear, we've got dual HDMI display port, two five gigabit USB type A ports, two USB two type A ports, and a 5.1 audio solution. There are three four pin fan headers on this motherboard. It has a single eight pin power input for CPU power. It takes a standard ATX power supply. This thing uses practically no power in its default configuration. TDP, out of the box configuration, 82 watts. It's Alder Lake, six performance cores, eight efficiency cores. It shows up as Intel 0000. That means it's an Intel engineering sample, but it appears to be the same stepping as the retail version of this CPU that you would expect to be in a notebook, except it's configured for laptop use. And yes, my Radeon 6950 XT in this platform almost bottlenecks. Bottlenecks maybe a little bit at 1080p, but for 1440p, it's really good. So if you were gonna pick up like a, an RX 7700 or some 7000 series, the 6000 series are on fire sale if you can still find them. This is the, uh, the Merc, the XFX Merc. This is a particularly good 6950X GPU. And so you can use that in this platform, basically max out your GPU with most AAA titles. Six performance cores, eight efficiency cores. You will bottleneck a little bit. The worst thing about this platform is that you'll have to manually dial in the memory. Now the XMP menu is a little easy to miss on this motherboard. And curiously, it doesn't always show. On my G-Skill Trident Z Neo uh, F4-3600C 14Q kit, it did show for the Corsair kit, there was no option other than default, which may be because of the capacity detection problem. I'm not really sure. I also tried some 3800 G-Skill Trident Z, and it detected the XMP profile, but it didn't seem to set the parameters correctly. So you will have to fiddle around in your BIOS for the memory, probably, unless you get lucky. The best that I could get it to run at was DDR4 3200. Theoretically, DDR4 4000 would probably work on this platform, but I could not get it to work. I think that it is not realistic to expect DIMMs with capacities larger than 16 gigabytes to work on this platform, which means that overall you're going to be limited to 32 gigabytes of memory. And I confirmed that testing with these uh, these Corsair Vengeance 32 gig DIMMs, the the LPX. Like this is the most Intel compatible thing under the sun, and this is 3200 uh, DDR4 and nada. It's it, it, they show up actually, but they only show up as. Uh, four gigabyte DIMMs, because it doesn't know. It has, it has trouble addressing that. It'd be nice, that there, there's probably a patch for the BIOS to make it work at 16 gigabytes instead of 32 gigabytes, but eh, it is what it is. In Geekbench, we get 1685 for our single thread score and just over 8,000 for our multi-core score. This is about what you'd expect for one of these Alder Lake CPUs running at this power configuration, this power envelope, about 80 watts, give or take. And this is also Alder Lake, so if you're worried about the 13th and 14th generation voltage degradation, theoretically, Alder Lake should not suffer from that. So that's nice. That said, there are a whole bunch of things here that you're taking into your own hands buying a motherboard like this. There's probably not going to be a BIOS update. You're getting an engineering sample CPU, more than likely, or possibly a notebook sample CPU. Support for this could stop at any time. Intel could publish a hostile microcode thing to make it stop working. But it's insanely cheap. So if you just want an insanely cheap motherboard that is a ridiculous amount of horsepower for the price, at least what it was on AliExpress at the time that I was shooting this video, 
this is a phenomenal deal because you could just take garbage you have laying around your house probably, I know my audience, and put together an incredible machine. A platform for a bit forbidden router. You've only got the X1 slot and it's only got the one onboard Realtek 2.5 gig NIC, but it's got one onboard Realtek 2.5 gig NIC. That's, that's pretty amazing for this platform. Use one of the two onboard SATA ports for SATA storage or a SATA boot drive and then just use your M.2 for more PCIe connectivity. That'd be great. There doesn't seem to be any BIOS options for bifurcation. The Intel client platform, Intel goes out of their way to, to hide the bifurcation options, but this being a notebook CPU, sometimes there's extra options, but in this case, no, there was not. How worth it is it to fiddle around in the BIOS and reconfigure the memory? Extremely worth it. These are the raw 8 of 64 numbers for this configuration and a resultant Geekbench scores. If you can get your memory to run at 3200 or 2666, you can bring up both the single core and the multi-core score substantially here. It'll even help with other tasks that you may be running on the CPU because, well, the DDR, it, it boots really conservatively to make sure that it works because again, notebook CPUs were designed for memory that's soldered on the motherboard, which is a much less challenging environment in terms of training and interference and everything else. So the fact that this works with removable full-size DIMMs is incredible. If I were the board designer for this board, I probably would have opted for notebook style DDR4 DIMMs. I think that would have been fine, but I think they wanted to leave the door open for, you know, DDR4 4000 and beyond with 2T timings. And I just don't know how realistic that is with mobile CPUs. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's for a laptop. The laptop's not gonna put in 35 watts of RAM. That's not a thing, really. VRM configuration is basically a 6 plus 1 plus 1. You actually can overclock this a little bit. I was kind of shocked. Uh, you won't want to push much past 135 watts, though, with this VRM configuration. So while you do have a little overclocking headroom, you don't have a ton of overclocking headroom. And remember, your, your overall performance is dominated by just six performance scores on Alder Lake. But the six performance scores on Alder Lake perform about like you'd expect. I don't know what else to tell you. You get the motherboard and the I.O. bracket and a hearty pat on the back when you order it from AliExpress and that's all you get. If you wanted to do something like this with a 500 watt power supply, as long as you're not rocking a 6950 XT, that'll work great. Something like the RX 7600, 7700, maybe up to you know, 4070 on this platform would be fine. I, I wouldn't really try to go much past a 6900 or a 6950 XT, because like I say, especially at 1080p, you start to be bottled a little bit by the platform, the memory speed, and everything else. Faster memory speed really does help when the memory is this glacial. I mean, keep in mind, it's still DDR4. It's slow DDR4 in this configuration. So you do probably want to fiddle around in the BIOS and get a little bit better memory latency than 137 nanoseconds. I'm Wendell, this has been a quick look at the ADL HP MATX MB V20. If you have any questions or you want to see me do a build with this or something, uh, let's chat in the forum at Level 1. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.